I am. My name is Takuya. Uh, watching a rugby wrap up. This is the one. It's coming back for Johnny Wilkinson. He drops for World Cup glory. Yeah! Francois Pinar and Nelson Mandela is cheering along with the whole of the stadium. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap Up, Rugby World Cup Talk. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by the Balanced Palette, Nutrition for Peak Performance, and the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby pub. Hey everybody and welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City talking rugby. But ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking rugby here in the United States. We're talking rugby across the globe in Japan where the World Cup is going to be. And we went over there to do a scout courtesy of USA Eagles Tours. And we got to sit down with the general manager of the Rugby World Cup, Rob Abernathy at Rugby World Cup HQ in Tokyo. Check this out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up on the road on our USA Eagles Tours Scout in the Rugby World Cup headquarters and we are here with none other than Rob Abernathy, the General Manager of Rugby World Cup 2019. Sir, it is a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you along. I believe you had time in Arizona as a Wildcat? That is correct, mm -hmm. University of Arizona in Tucson. Very as much student enjoyed athlete? My, my two years there, it was a lot of fun. Swimming? Very seriously, yes. So you are the Aussie swimmer who won a bronze medal at the 1993 FINA Short Course World Championships, the that's, first. That's correct, it was in Spain. Do you still have that medal? I do, it's in a sock in my drawer at home in Australia. <laughs> so let me ask you this, uh, as a rugby player and a swimmer, Olympic gold medal as a swimmer or being part of a Webb Ellis Championship winning team? Hmm, that's a tough one. I mean, uh, swimming for me was a big part of my life for 20 years, and it's obviously an individual sport, but when you go to college, um, it's certainly a team sport when you get to the NC2A level. Uh, so I've had the experience and joy of uh, working as a team in, in the swimming sport, but obviously rugby, team-based sport, it's the 15 out on the field, plus your reserves and everybody else in the entourage that make it work, and we can see behind us the William Webb, Webb Ellis Cup you did not answer the question, sir, but that was great avoiding it. The, the Webb Ellis as a, as a player <laughs> or the gold medal as a swimmer? Well, if I'd progressed as far in swimming as to a gold medal at the Olympic Games, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. So I'd have to say Webb Ellis. All right, good answer because you're sitting in front of the cup right here. That was, <laughs> I know that you're perspiring on that one. All right, I told you I wasn't going to ask you any tough questions, but I lie all the time. Sydney, 2000. Olympic Games, 2002 Commonwealth Games, the Rugby World Cup in 2003, Football Federation Australia, with no of Australia, it's just straight across, right? Yeah. The FFA. Correct. Okay. London 212 Olympic Games, and you bounced around Asia, Singapore specifically with Sports Hub? Correct. Yeah, so you basically, you're qualified to do what you're doing. Um, it depends who you ask. Yeah. Yeah. Don't well, ask I'm looking at the resume, I'm looking at your experience, and I'm like, okay, he knows, what he's knows, he knows what he's doing. How did you end up doing it? Uh, well, sport's always been part of my life. Um, I've participated and watched sport. Um, it was a natural progression for me at university to go into the sports management field. I got a very lucky break on the Sydney 2000 Olympics. I'm from Sydney, so for me that was always a goal when I was going through university, and I got a very lucky break. And I was there early. I went through a two and a half year uh, process with the organising committee for the Sydney Olympic Games and I uh, was very fortunate to be part of the Aquatic Centre delivery uh, come Games time for the Olympics and Paralympics. And it was just a fabulous experience and I enjoyed it so much that I thought I would join the circus and continue on. <laughs> and here we are juggling balls, are, right? Of course. You know, 20 years on. We had Rugby World Cup sevens in San Francisco. I believe fabulous you were at event. that event, right? Absolutely fabulous event. Great event. Yeah. United States, not a rugby nation in terms of professional rugby and infrastructure yet. We're getting there. Mm. Japan has it. Correct. You know, that's a big difference and I think a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, very deep history in rugby in Japan and um, it's a big part of the schools and university system. They have a, a men's professional league that's been going for a number of years. Uh, quite a number of current and ex-international Tier 1 players do play here. Dan Carter, the great All Black, playing in the top league here. Yeah. So that's very Making exciting. Making a couple of bucks doing that, right? 
you'll, have to, you'll have to ask his yeah. agent. But um, look, that, that's a fabulous sign. And Japan as a national team uh, has always competed very well uh, and getting better and had a, a good World Cup in 2015. They knocked over Don't South, Africa. South Africa. Correct, yeah. <laughs> uh, which was one of the stories of the tournament. Yeah. And uh, obviously being host this time, uh, we're hoping that Japan can avail themselves very well. What, what is the biggest challenge for you guys and World Rugby in Japan for, for this World Cup? Very good question. I think any organising committee is a new business. It's a start-up business. Okay, so you're throwing together a giant logistical project that needs to be pulled off in a very short space mm -hmm. of time. You don't have the long term to think about you know, great decade-long strategies. Um, you've got a period of time from start to finish and your start date doesn't move. So it's, it's immovable. Um, and That's a very good point. We have to uh, put together a very complex um, venues and logistical um, project that lasts over six weeks, um, 48 matches, 12 cities, and all those moving parts, the different people, the different stakeholders, obviously the teams and their requirements, which are very specific, Putting together all the logistics is something you won't see until it happens. Um, so on paper, you don't know. You only see it once it happens. Well, we've bounced around on this scout for like rugby fans out of the States, specifically on this USA Eagles tours thing. Mm -hmm. And the infrastructure, the train systems, well, we took a flight, the stadiums, everything was spot on. This is a rugby players, fans, dream to come to Japan, this different culture, and get all these different mm. um, foods and experiences. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. I didn't expect it like this, to be honest with you. Yeah, look, I think for a lot of people, it's going to be an awakening about Japan. Um, I think it's a really exciting prospect for the World Cup to move outside of a traditional tier one rugby nation. And I think that's the reason why we're seeing massive international interest in the tournament because you're putting Destination Japan with Rugby World Cup together and that's a nice package for a lot of people to yeah. make that purchasing decision to, to come. There is a good level of rugby support here. Um, for instance, in 2015 when Japan played Scotland, roughly 50 million people watched that match. That's, that's a incredible. significant amount of people. Yeah. Uh, it's roughly you know, just less than half the country here. So there is, a, there is a latent interest that is coming out, so we're expecting a great outcome, and certainly from a cultural perspective, you know, for an international fan perspective, something that nobody's ever experienced. And that's what's gonna leave brilliant memories. And my final question is, how can you ensure that the Eagles win the World Cup? There's nothing I can do to help with that. <laughs> However, I think the USA is on a very strong trajectory in rugby uh, over the long term, particularly now that rugby's in the Olympic Games. And I think it's a, it's a fabulous, fabulous outlet for boys, girls, men's, men's and women's. So, you know, good luck to the USA Eagles. I hope they do well and I hope they improve from their previous World Cup performances. And I certainly think they're going to get a great reception here in Japan. With Mr. Rob Abernethy, the general manager of Rugby World Cup 2019 here at Tourney Central in Tokyo. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Rugby World Cup Japan. It only happens once in a lifetime, folks. USA Eagles Tours can help you get there. They can advise you. They can maybe get you tickets, get you accommodations. It's not too late. you got to get there. It's going to be cool. I, we were there. It's unbelievable. Really looking forward to it. And I want to thank Mr. Rob Abernathy for taking the time out and Mr. Ryan Ginty of Next Level Rugby for helping us shoot that segment. On behalf of all those gentlemen, more Rugby Wrap-Up at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 in New York City, signing off.